start the webinar anyway. Um, this is a webinar in a series of, uh, of uh, webinars where Polis um, tries to turn European transport innovation into local actions. Um, we are active in, in several European projects and we are linking these uh, practices of European projects with stories from our members, but also with stories from um, external um, experts, um, service provider stories, etc. Um, and you can see here the, uh, the entire program for the month of, uh, of October, um, where today we're talking about parking. Uh, but on Thursday, we'll be talking about the uh, impacts of uh, automated vehicles um, and many more to follow uh, later this month. Um, so this uh, webinar, as I have uh, already mentioned, takes place in cooperation with uh, two Civitas uh, projects, the Civitas Park for Sump project and the satellite uh, project. Um, the meeting is recorded also so that you can uh, look at it and others can look at it after uh, after the um, uh, after the event is concluded and please use the uh, the q a um, function and the um, chat function to ask questions or to comment um, to what the speakers are saying. I will anyway monitor both uh, the chat and the um, Q&A function. Um, you can also share uh, your views on social media uh, and also have a look at the, um, the respective project websites um, so that we have a bit of visibility of, of uh, our discussions. Um, and this is the program for today. Um, we have uh, three excellent speakers. Um, we'll start with the uh, the city of Rot Rotterdam, a Park for Sump um, uh, partner and also a um, an, uh, well appreciated police member, a former police president even. Uh, and uh, Bastian Pige is the person who uh, looks at, uh, at smart parking enforcement uh, in the city. Um, We'll start with him and then depending on whether uh, Oscar from uh, Lisbon would arrive in time, uh, we can start with, we can continue with Oscar and uh, otherwise we turn to Rodney Stiles from Populous. Um, Rodney is calling in from the, um, the east coast of the US. So for him, it's uh, still breakfast time, but we are happy that he's here and he has a very interesting story about how, um, how parking could evolve in the uh, in the next decades. But um, Bastian, I think we will start with you. I will stop sharing my slides, and then you can uh, you can start sharing yours. And I'll turn off my camera also, and I will mute myself. Everything okay, Bastian? You have the right to share. Yeah. I think I'm sharing the wrong yeah. screen. That might be a problem. I'll try again. Yeah, we are seeing the, um, yeah, this is, now we see both your notes and your... Um, it's going so, wrong, still wrong. Uh, uh, maybe I'll... Yeah, if you, if you choose... Uh, switch? Yeah, you have to... Um, yeah, now it works. Yeah, okay. This is better, yep. Thank okay, you. thanks. Go thanks ahead. Thanks for the introduction. Thank you for having me here. Uh, I'm Bastian Pigge from the mobility department of the city of Rotterdam one of the partners in the Park for Sump project. Um, I'm not from the enforcement part of our city, but I work together with uh, the colleagues of uh, parking uh, who are also um, for the enforcement. 
But I'll uh, try to explain how we uh, work with a, a quite smart system. And I'll start with the um, uh, work progress. Uh, something about, uh, uh, well, of course, uh, data we uh, will um, uh, um, collect. Something about uh, in innovations in uh, the smart enforcement and some other parking innovations like parking sensors um, we also use for the project of Park for Sun. <clears throat> Just give a little bit of a view about our city, Rotterdam. We have the largest port of Europe, about 650,000 residents, um, and the second large city of the Netherlands. And we uh, introduced paid parking in 1965 on street. And we have about 96, maybe 97,000 regulated parking spaces. It's, it's changing uh, every few months, about 615 parking machines. And it's nice to mention we already have about 19 years of uh, um, payment without any cash. Uh, 100,000 plus parking permits. Uh, it's as well the companies as the, the business uh, permits and about 16 million parking transactions per year. And of course we have off street parking while well, you can see uh, some um, uh, public garages with about 50, uh, 5,000 parking spaces, uh, some park and ride facilities, uh, with about 4,000 parking spaces, but I think they will go up about uh, up to 5,000 in the next years. And um, also a lot of subscriptions in the, in the garages. Well, how does the smart enforcement system we have uh, work? Uh, we drive around with uh, scan cars, of course, uh, they are uh, uh, hybrid and the new ones just arrived are fully electrical and they work with uh, geographical data. Uh, beside it, um, some systems for the positioning of the scan vehicle. And they, uh, of course, scan the number plates of the parked cars and checking the parking rights in a different system. Then we have a, a follow-up organized and um, in a lot of cases we have to impose additional tax. And about the geographical data, uh, it uh, uh, consists of a basic reg registration of uh, the topographical date, uh, like uh, street names and um, uh, where the streets are. And uh, additional to that, we have the, um, the information about um, uh, parking tariffs, uh, parking zones, sectors, if it's a disabled parking place or is it other reserved parking. And um, it's all um, uh, recorded in our own geo parking database. And um, the up to date, keeping it up to date, it's also based on uh, the information the car collects during uh, the, the, the rounds. Well, what do we have in, in the car? Of course, there's a, a, a GPS system uh, which uh, um, helps to locate the car. Uh, a special extra thing, it's uh, the INS. It's um, a gyroscope system. If the GPS system uh, fails or has less connection. Now we have um, a big computer uh, in it connected to the, the cameras. And in the computer is a, a turnkey solution scan box with the, um, the software is developed uh, uh, it, it's it's our own uh, software program, and uh, the, the cameras are um, high on top of the roof of the car and can scan almost any car 
even well you can read as 10 centimeters close from each other um, can be uh, scanned what the system does uh, when it's driving around is uh, checking for the parking right in the um, it's the, the national parking uh, register uh, that's a, um, a dutch database where all the parking rights that the transactions by app or parking machine um, are stored and it's um, it's located at the rdw and that's the vehicle authority and they have a special database for it and it's nice to mention that even in the uk they are looking at this system if they can have their own um, national parking register like this one and um, it's um, it's uh, well the, the also the um, we have the the park saver that's administration system of the city of Rotterdam they are all uh, the the permits registered and um, it's a combination of those two things which make if a car is uh, part right or not. And we have uh, the follow up. It, uh, since this year, it's almost every time done behind a computer. Someone is looking at the pictures taken by the car on the violations and only rarely someone has to go to the location. And uh, when um, uh, uh, someone hasn't paid, well, they have to impose an additional tax and that's done by the municipal tax office. It's a tax office because we have um, our paid parking system is, uh, is a tax measure and um, parking on illegal places, wrong places, that's not the tax uh, violation, but that's, um, and, and um, well, it's a, a different offense, and that's uh, not fined by the scan car, but by the police or special officers. Well, what do we get out of the data from our smart uh, cars? Well, of course, we uh, they the the um, the input is parking capacity but also um, output out of the car is uh, some uh, numbers about parking capacity. There can be more cars in an area than uh, if you count uh, places or meters uh, uh, um, along the sidewalk. Of course, occupancy rates, we can uh, calculate out of it. Payment rates, uh, about uh, parking tickets and uh, the system of um, automatically uh, counting cars like we normally do uh, by hand or have done by hand is still in progress like a system. And of course we can uh, use a lot of data co collected to um, guide the vehicle like um, uh, where it's uh, we need to to check on the permits more than other places. Like the um, uh, payment ra um, ratio is very low. Um, how to get, um, well, the, the best out of your uh, control. We have a, a special dashboard for it. And like these numbers where you get a payment uh, ratio uh, lower than a, a certain amount, they get red and uh, you need to check more. Uh, some innovations on the smart enforcement. It's um, like I told the, the, the follow-up done on distance. We do it since uh, this year. Um, more and more planning of the scan vehicles done on analysis of data. It's, uh, um, it's also in progress. We use it already, but it's still in progress. Then we have uh, cameras which can take panoramic pictures. It's also too, uh, useful to have uh, uh, less complaints about uh, the tickets. And uh, like I told, the, the counting of the cars done by the scan vehicle is also uh, 
some thing we have to innovate more on. It's not working yet that good. Um, and a lot of data we, we collect, we like to um, use in the dashboard to help um, for, um, for all kinds of things. We, we want to uh, have to um, uh, use uh, for, for, for decision making. We want to know um, how busy the, the, the districts are. Uh, this is um, an, a dashboard of uh, uh, a commercial party. They count um, every now and then in a lot of sit, uh, streets by hand, using a lot of uh, students most of the times. And we like to uh, have this more done by the scan car and combine it with a lot of other data to um, steer the city and uh, other projects we're working on it's um, also in the um, in the um, project of park for some some uh, nice uh, sensor uh, projects and uh, can show you uh, the the first one it's informing citizens uh, and, and the restriction of search traffic it was a closed uh, app user group uh, they would get um, um, could use uh, an app and see in their area where there are um, free spaces available based on uh, data from uh, sensors and we have um, a charging hub that's also a quite interesting one uh, normally you can um, uh, see if someone is charging or parked on the um, charging spot uh, uh, via the uh, the charger the, the the charger of the um, on the place on that spot but uh, we here we have um, 10 parking spaces and uh, all they have charging infrastructure infrastructure but some of them are non-reserved for charging. And it's nice to see if uh, also people uh, not driving an electric car will use those parking spots and if electrical uh, vehicles will be parked, will they also be uh, charging? But it's, um, it's also a product in the, in the park for some. And we will uh, get on that with some information uh, after, well, during the project. Well, that's for now. Um, maybe there's some questions. Uh, please take a look at Park for some um, websites for for some um, some films uh, made uh, about the project, also in Rotterdam. And if you have any questions you cannot ask today, feel free to connect me. Okay, thank you, Bastian. Um, very clear presentation about the huge effort you go through. Um, for enforcement, but also the kind of uh, of information you you get out of that uh, that process. Um, the um, I have a question uh, before uh, the Q and A starts to explode, um, which is not happening at the moment. Um, the um, you the the data you use you show in your slides uh, is very much focused on uh, using it in parking system internal, let's say, to inform uh, parking behavior. Um, do you also use that data for further mobility purposes? And how would, how would that work uh, in case you do that? Um, to, to go a bit beyond informing the driver, but also informing the city about uh, policy decisions to, to make. Well, um, we um, sometimes use the information to make clear to the people why we are uh, taking some measures. But most of the time it's, it's used for us for the decision making. We uh, don't use uh, information on uh, available parking spots to uh, guide people coming out of the city um, from outside of the city to a free space. That's something we don't want because we don't want all people going into the city by car. If they go, come by car, they have to leave it, well, prefer 
outside of the city at a park and ride facility. But there might be more, uh, more possibilities to use the data to, to well, communicate about parking or other mobility uh, issues. We have some questions uh, in the chat. The uh, first one is uh, whether the use of the panoramic pictures actually, if it's used as an as evidence and to what degree does it change? Is it different from, from uh, using normal normal pictures? Well, I'm not, I'm not sure why um, it would be um, better than other pictures, maybe to have um, not just the focus on the car, that the car is has done something wrong, but more about the situation. Maybe the um, the driver was walking towards a place to pay, or something other different happened. But it's it's the, the people involved with the enforcement say it's it's an improvement. I'm not exactly sure about on what item. Ivo, your mic is off. Thank you. That's the one moment that that happens. Um, the um, yeah, there's also the question uh, to what how do you use uh, the the uh, the revenue of parking? Whether you have some kind of of earmarking? Uh, because we the park for some uh, people in the audience know that this is a, a substantial amount. I don't know if you want to mention it again. The the revenue for parking in, in Rotterdam, but it's. Uh, mm. It's substantial. I, 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 I'm and, not sure about the, the no, no, no. Figures. So I but, don't want to call it, but it's it's no, a lot. It's yeah, it's a, and you, but it it goes into the central pot of it, the city, it or goes is in, um, yeah. into the the well in in the big black box, hmm. and a lot of things are paid out of it. Hmm. Not not especially uh, something what has to do with parking. Well, at least it starts with parking because it's uh, you have to pay the system. Uh, of parking to have it running like the enforcement and the parking machines and um, like the, the, the hardware mm -hmm. has to be paid and the people enforcing but then there's a lot more and but it goes into the city uh, mm. um, well for the whole city for all developments yeah. okay before going to uh, Oscar and trying whether it works there's a, a final question uh whether you have uh, yeah this this option of cashless uh operations is it is it fully cashless or are there still uh is cash still possible and if not does that cause problems for for some users i don't think it's it's still it's it's, it's possible anymore to have um, to pay by cash and well we have it already for 19 maybe almost 20 years and um, maybe in the beginning it was a problem but then we had um, uh, first the, the, the special chip card mm. and then we had the chip card on the on the bank card and I think it's well hardly any uh, any time a problem I, mm -hmm. I remember from about 15 16 years ago I went to Rotterdam and I had some problems with paying because I didn't have that card, so mm. I went into mm. a garage and and you could pay just by bank cards yeah, yeah, or credit yeah. cards. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. There are more questions, but I hope you can stay on until the end for hopefully a, a ten minutes of, of Q and A still. Um, but I'm moving to Oscar. Uh, thank you, Bastian. Oscar, can we try your sound and hope it's better now? I hope so. Do you yes. Hear? Oh, good okay finally yes because uh in the test it it went quite uh it went very strange oscar do i present your slides or you do that from, from i can uh, do that okay uh, good i'm going to share my my presentation i don't know where it is so bastian was here to talk about stricter parking management um and smarter and greener as well but for oscar we we focus on the greener uh but he's also smart and it's there's also enforcement involved, uh, but we asked uh, Oscar to talk about how uh, their parking policies can, in in Lisbon um, bring new mobility services uh, in the picture of the user. So, Oscar, the floor is yours. 
Thank you. Uh, Ivo, just say me if, is that okay? You can see the, the, the slides? Okay. So, um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be invited by Paulis to, to do this presentation. Um, I'm going to just take a short overview about what is changing about parking in Lisbon and due to the problem of the confination and the COVID uh, uh, pandemic status, we have to change and the politicians, uh, they take that chance not to go back, but to go further. And the, the main issue and the main idea is that parking policies are changing and we are do right now we are crossing that change that started a few years ago with, with fighting the number of vehicles in city, in city centers and all that sustainable measures and policies that were implemented uh, through the, the, the white paper in, in transport and mobility. And suddenly this pandemic scenario just came along. But um, during that process of changing one of the biggest ideas that we face in Lisbon is less parking on surface. Uh, there's a new land of, there's a new strategy for land use. Uh, the cities are made for citizens, not for cars. It's the main message, the main idea that we are facing a few years ago. Uh, on the other hand, the growth of the electric vehicles are increasing every day, every, every year. Um, they, they bring to parking management different needs. Uh, all the infrastructure that is right now needed to, to, to build um, specific parking spaces for electric vehicles are quite different from the regular parking spaces that we don't need any specific uh, infrastructure um, besides the, the, the parking meter or something like that. And the click uh, uh, and the swift was about promoting urban cycling. It's something that came along with the sustainable uh, mobility and uh, soft modes, but biking that became one of the, the, the big issues in all cities. Uh, most of them were not prepared to, to improve this cycling era. Um, they have to change, they start to change. And uh, I will show you later in Lisbon, this uh, once again, the, the things were uh, getting by the politicians uh, about all, all this uh, COVID, COVID uh, problem. And uh, lots of people just avoid, after the confination, avoid the, the use of public transports because of the social uh, distancing and um, the risk of getting again into the, the personal cars was, was too high and the politicians just take that chance to, to thrive on and to, 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 to push all the, 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 the use of the bike as an individual vehicle uh, in spite of the, 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 the car. And that's something that all over Europe is coming uh, and it's growing every day. The, the new mobility is arriving from soft modes, the sharing society, and most of that uh, the combined, combined different kinds of modes of, of, of mobility modes to um, avoid the use, the massive use of, of cars in the city centers. I tried to, let me see if this works, ah, it's working. However, uh, the parking enforcement, that's the, the main issue and the main task, uh, the main job of, of ML, my company, uh, we have to, to, to continue to do that because the cities are not prepared to, to forget the use of the car, not yet. And this kind of work, this kind of daily basis is, is still on and we have to improve this and we have to, to continue to do this enforcement, this hard enforcement, trying to fight the use of the vehicles. Because uh, if you don't 
continue to do this kind of enforcement, this kind of fighting every day for the illegal parking, we, we don't want to, to take this picture and to, to watch how the city was backyards some years ago, some decades ago. One of the major squares of the city of Lisbon were, were a gigantic uh, parking lot full of cars in, in the 80s, in, in the 70s, in the 80s. And we don't want to, to come this again, uh, to watch this again. And nowadays, due to our work every day, the city is, is changing. And the, 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 the land and the, the main squares and the streets are returning to the pedestrians, are returning to soft modes, are returning to the use of the citizens, and not full of cars everywhere. Another picture of a, a central area as well, really, really close to the, to, to the one before, that is crowded with cars, illegal parking everywhere, what a mess that you can see. But nowadays, we have a, a different perspective in the same place, the same spot where full of cars, we rebuild it with the parking money, with the revenue of from parking. And um, it changed a lot. And it is a very uh, uh, interesting area, a very interesting garden for people to enjoy, to bring children and to leave the city. Uh, some of you may be questioning, uh, what about the cars? Where did the cars go? Uh, yeah, but they go somewhere. Most of them, they stay home or they just were swapped by public transport or soft modes. But there's a, a huge part of the cars that are continuing coming into the city. And we have to understand that below that garden, that beautiful garden, you have 205 parking places. So one of the big issues, one of the big measures is to take the, the cars off of the surface of the streets of the city surface and put it beneath uh, in underground parking lots and in park and ride outside the, the, the city. And uh, that is the, the politics and the policies that we are um, going on, we are using right now. Uh, like I said before, um, the city is changing and we have to change a little bit what I used to, uh, giving new life to parking spaces. Par parking spaces must be changed, uh, not all at the same time, but uh, in a several, in, in, in a growing uh, scale and for specific purposes. Um, the growth of the electric cars, it is one one of the, the big issues that the cities must take, take along and, and take care of. Uh, this is one of the, the examples that we've made. We've made by reducing the regular parking and paid parking places and start to use those parking places to different kinds of combinations. Electric vehicles. For, you can see the, 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 the sequence uh, it used to be a, a very crowded square with full of cars in front of a, an hospital, and now it's changing. Even the social distance that the COVID bring to us uh, provided some ideas of changing. If people, uh, after the, the confination, we, are, we have been confined from March to July in Portugal, more or less, and when we go to the street, when we went to street, the streets on those on those months, the, the, like you know, all, all over the world, the cities were empty. So after the deconfination, the main issue of the politicians was let's try to avoid the return of all that cars. Let's use some of these um, uh, manners uh, to create opportunities to bring some public space to persons and citizens. Uh, and this is another example, to trying to change uh, some parking spaces to more uh, environmental uh, use uh, of the public space. And 
providing even other kind of, of infrastructures for soft modes and for bikes. Suddenly, some bike parks just appeared. Uh, so when people get out of the confination, they were surprised by these new uh, infrastructures and they understood that the bike, the use of the bike in the city center is nowadays uh, an option with some uh, strategy, with some regular conditions, condi conditions uh, with parking, with my clients, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and this is the resume, investing parking revenue in soft mobility solutions. And that's something that we are doing for five, six years ago, and we are increase, increasing, and the thing is, is growing. Uh, by implementing the bike sharing that started in Lisbon in 2018, I guess. Uh, the growth of the bike lanes network. Uh, bike parking, like I show you in the, in, in the last slide. Uh, urban escalators. Some city of Lisbon has got set seven hills, uh, uh, some slopes that are difficult to, to special for elderly people to, to go through. And elevators, escalators uh, in the public space are a very good option. And we have some of those uh, already built uh, with the money that came from the parking revenue. This is the bike sharing scheme in, in Lisbon, the, the big picture. We have 1,400 bikes uh, on the way. 60% of those are electric. Uh, the full plan is got. Uh, 140 bike stations. Uh, since the beginning in, in 2017, we have crossed over 3.1 million uh, trips. Uh, we have 15,000 uh, annual subscribers. Um, that is a very, a, a very common uh, used kind of usage that, that all the people that live in the city can get an annual subs subscription for 25 euros and they can use the bike uh, every day if they want. And the, the, the average use of each uh, bike per day is growing and growing and we are reaching almost eight uses per day per bike. This is the big picture of the, 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 the stations, the bike station, the, the bike sharing stations in the city of Lisbon. Um, they are mainly in the city center uh, in the in the uh, central business district, where the people near the universities as well and the public transport um, interfaces, uh, making the connection uh, between those areas and trying to avoid um, the use of the, the, the individual car, the private car. Um, we were facing some contests. Um, some some people that doesn't understand or didn't like to use to leave the car at home and to bring the the, the bike or use the bike as a public transport, uh, but the number of public uh, parking spaces on surface were reduced as well to implement the the the, the bike stations. Uh, in the, the last three years, we, we, we saw here in Lisbon a, a, a bike lane, not evolution, I call it a revolution, because we started in 2018 with 40 kilometers alongside uh, the city, and the plan was established by the mayor uh, last year was to reach next year, 2031, 20, uh, 200 kilometers. It's a huge uh, challenge for everyone, um, especially for politicians, because there's, we're going to, to, to have elections precisely next year. Uh, but once again, during the COVID confination period, uh, when people were stay at home, um, the, the, the municipality start to, 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 to push a little stronger all the constructions of, of these bike lanes and the network was growing, growing uh, in, the, in, in, 
in a clear way, the clear message that was sent by the municipality and by the mayor to promote the use of, of bike on the urban on the urban land. Um, the plan is this one, more than half of this plan is already um, constructed, is already built, is already on use. Um, it defines a, a full city coverage and the main issues, all the central area of the city is covered by these bike lanes um, with six main axes where the, the, the where the, the, the bikes are needed with the other the, the areas that the, the the use of cars and the use of public transport is more intense and this this strategy is to connect all the uh, outskirts of the city into the city center using these new uh, mobility modes and the last message is this one uh, even with covid nothing can stop us and if the city is changing why not parking changes too this is what i want to 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 explain and to bring to you i'm ready to to answer some questions if you wish thank you Ivo. thank you oscar for uh, this clear presentation showing the ambitions and also the achievements of your your city um what I uh, see in the Q&A is a question of, uh, about the electric charging infrastructures. I know also that you're very concerned about um, accessibility of the, of the public space. Um, and that, um, um, yeah, and the question is whether um, adding technical equipment like charging, uh, electric charging infrastructures, uh, whether that doesn't hamper uh, the access of the public space, um, is there a consideration uh, made for for that? Um, this is um, the electrification of the parking places was um, it was part of a, a national plan. That's something that we have been been grown since 2012, I believe. Uh, I've been involved in several European projects about the, the promoting the electric, electric mobility. But um, this is a national plan. It was uh, provided and financed by the government through all these years. And um, the number of places in this in, 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 for electric cars, reserved for electric cars, for electric charging all over the city is still is very few uh, we have not even 1000 parking places on surface for electric cars uh, but it's growing and i believe that something that three years ago we didn't uh, have that 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 perspective uh, we have a lot of charging on the street a lot less than 1,000, but there's a lot of, of parking spaces that were reduced for having the chargers, and there's no, no one looking for them. Nowadays, it's the opposite. The number of electric cars have grown so much that in front of my office, there's two places for charging, and we have all day long, three, four, five, six cars waiting that one can charge uh, to, get to, to get it to, to that place. Um, it's growing. It's something that's growing. It's managed by, it was financed by the government, but now it's managed by the city and involved with some partnerships with the private companies. Okay, but no nuisance for pedestrians, no issues with no, the cables no, 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 and no, the equipment? No, and, uh, yeah. no issues. Um, I think, and I believe that something could be done, something could be done. Um, to improve that that security, that safety, but uh, nowadays I don't I don't uh, mm -hmm. realize that's any any problem. The cables are not crossing the the uh, the path. Mm -hmm. uh, are connected. The, the, the chargers are inside, almost inside the parking space, so pedestrians don't have any any problem. Okay, and then a question about the um, uh, the parking um, 
Uh, ah, okay. There's, yeah, there's a, you find a comment in the in the questions also, Oscar, about this. So um, the question was also that the um, uh, that also people with disabilities need to have a guaranteed access to charging stations. So the idea that there is an um, that the the that there might be spaces that are assigned uh, to that need to be accessible also uh, to the to the connected to charging points, but that's. Um, that's a yes. an issue it's, in it's, France. That's a it's, it's, yeah. it's not an issue yet. Uh, we mm. are starting. We st have started two years ago to um, to design on, on, on the parking uh, on surface some specific places for uh, handicapped for disabled mm. persons uh, much wider and we, with some ramps if, if the, the surface is not not flat. Uh, but for charging, uh, for specifically for charging um, infrastructure, uh, I believe there's two or three places in the city that they work like a, a, a gas station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. a small area with 10 or 12 parking spaces mm -hmm. and just for electric cars and they have a lot of space around them uh, that could be an option for disabled. Okay, good. Yeah, there are some more uh, interesting questions in the Q&A. Maybe you can answer also in writing, Oscar, okay. uh, because we okay. have to move to the next speaker and we'll also um, might come back if, uh, to, if we go Thank a bit you. over time. Um, but it's really now the time to, to bring Rodney into the picture. Uh, Rodney Stiles works for uh, Populous. Um, Populous is an, uh, a service provider uh, for anybody who wants to bring new mobility services uh, in in the city and and rodney can better explain what they are doing um, but he brings a perspective for the future of parking um rodney the floor is yours all right thank you thanks to, to paul for having me um like Evo said i'm joining from new york so I'm still morning here i'm going to share um some of the things we're seeing in the state and really i think to, to connect some threads between um, Oscar and Sebastian, uh, you know, thinking about those issues of enforcement, thinking about how do we prioritize modes that aren't just private cars. Um, so hopefully you can um, sort of pull everything together and then we can have a little bit of discussion afterwards. Um, so Eva said, I'm, I'm from Populous, so we're a company that helps cities manage mobility programs. Um, what that means is we've mostly been working with cities to help manage shared bike and scooter fleets, um, but also, as I'll talk about today, a little bit of car sharing and also working on streets or with cities to digitally manage their streets and their curbs and to be able to push out, um, you know, information to operators and users of that space. Um, you know, the big issue, and this is right around the corner from where I live, two parcel delivery trucks basically blocking a roadway. Um, you know, both freight and parcel delivery and ride hailing, although less so during the pandemic. Um, so services like Uber and Lyft here in the States um, have just really exploded in cities in the last 10 years. Um, and I think in particular, what I want to focus on today is how often these services uh, maybe don't pay for their fair share um, of their use of, of space, in particular parking. Um, so if we look at here in the States in San Francisco, how that curb space, the parking space is allocated on street, um, it might not surprise you that most of that is actually allocated toward private vehicle storage. Um, and most of that is unpaid. So only 10% of that parking space is metered, 90% is unmetered, meaning people are using the streets to park their cars for free. Meanwhile, there are all these other uses that are going on, things around the movement of people and goods, and also a little bit of public space and obviously our emergency uses of street space. Um, but also that's really changed in the last five to 10 years. Um, you know, as was mentioned before, it's not just vehicle storage, it's maybe electric vehicle storage and charging. So having that infrastructure there. Um, 
you know, car sharing services, ride hailing services, shared scooters, dock bikes, um, you know, new forms of, of, of transit, um, and in particular, you know, delivery of goods by all different, you know, types of vehicles, on-demand food delivery, which I know has been really huge during the pandemic as everyone, you know, stayed at home. Um, but, you know, also with the pandemic, our use of streets isn't just about storage of vehicles. Um, you know, it might be about having some curbside dining, especially as, you know, restaurants um, close the indoors of their, um, you know, establishments. Um, and this might shock you, this is not a European plaza, but actually Boston, Massachusetts. So, you know, I think what's interesting here is we're, we're really seeing after businesses have been fighting for decades around preserving parking spaces in front of their restaurants or other businesses, they're fighting for this because they know that they need to be able to make some money. Um, and it's, you know, a lot of businesses have, have been hurt and this has been a way for them to continue to operate uh, during the pandemic. Um, you know, right here in my own neighborhood, this cafe has now seating outside along the parking, uh, you know, uh, lane. But what I want to highlight here, so here's your parking meter. So um, that means no one's paying for that space, um, which means the city is losing out on revenue, um, which, you know, makes sense in, in, in a pandemic situation. The priority is helping small businesses. And so the city can forego revenue from parking, which honestly is not going to be as high as it used to be um, because fewer people are driving and parking. Um, and so to be able to turn over some of that space to support business has been a key priority for a lot of places. Um, you know, before the pandemic, a lot of cities were talking about ways to pilot some changes to uh, that curb space to, you know, to go back to the earlier slide, focus on those other uses of the street, uh, ride hailing, pick up and drop off, for instance, or having more space for delivery trucks to load and unload. Um, and sort of what happened is that all took a back seat. Um, I think as many of you also probably in your own roles found, you know, when an emergency hits, folks that work for cities, you know, they're the ones that are often on the front line helping to uh, make sure everyone's safe make sure everyone can, you know, move freely um, and, and get a chance to get out there and breathe and exercise. And I know a lot of transportation planners have focused on, you know, um, as uh, uh, Oscar said, converting some of that space temporarily, maybe for bike lanes or, you know, for people to get out there um, on the street. Um, so in a pilot, this is kind of what we, uh, our framework for thinking about it because parking is often a controversial topic. Um, people want to keep their parking if they have access to it. As I said before, businesses might fight changing some existing regulations. So we encourage cities to start small, identify your target. Is there a place in your city where there's a particular problem, maybe where there's a lot more deliveries than there used to be? or maybe it's a particular curb user, um, you know, like Amazon here has just, it's incredible how many Amazon trucks I see now a day, whereas last year it was a completely different picture. Um, or, you know, as Sebastian was talking about earlier, you know, utilization, is there a certain level that you're looking for? And if you can measure that, maybe you set a target there. Um, and then slowly adjust your regulations, right? Figure out who's gonna have access to that space, um, if you're able to charge for commercial loading, for instance, um, maybe to be able to do that. I think one of the issues that we see is previous ideas here rely on that delivery driver getting out and paying for parking, um, which, you know, for businesses that want to be efficient, they want to deliver your package as quickly as possible. Maybe that doesn't make as much sense. So I'm going to talk a little bit about thinking about ways to um, validate use of parking without having someone actively pay or open an app or whatever. Um, and then I think when we're talking about pilots, you always need willing participants. Um, you know, if you don't have a partner to come to the table with you to really figure out 
how to change things. Um, I just don't think it's going to be as successful. Um, so, sorry, um, it looks like this picture is not going to show up, but sort of what we were looking toward when thinking about parking management was the work we've done with cities around managing micromobility, so managing shared bikes and scooters. Um, so, what you can see here is a map, a heat map that shows the parking locations of those bikes and scooters. Um, using data that the city got access to through their permit program to identify those hotspots to create new bike and scooter parking, um, which I think we're also going to miss here. Uh, basically, the city converted what was once parking for cars to be uh, bike racks for scooters and bikes to help manage the mess of dockless uh, bikes and scooters, which you know, often are just laid around the sidewalk, but to really make sure they park in places um, in, in a more organized fashion. Um, and then so we took that idea and, and said, okay, we can do this with bikes and scooters. What about with other uses? And, and so the first time we did that was in the city of Seattle with a car sharing service from Lime. Um, they had a car share service called LimePod. And basically, Seattle had already mapped their curbs. So here you can see along this one block, these are the rules for weekdays and on Saturdays for how much it costs to park in that particular space. Um, and we were able to then use GPS data directly from Lime um, on their vehicles to say, okay, there's a vehicle parked here. It's parked here for an hour. Look up the rate at that time and then invoice them so that they can just pay for parking. So no driver had to get out and feed a meter. Nobody had to go on an app. It was all done in a way that's seamless um, and where the you know, operator could in one lump sum each month just pay the city for their use of parking space. So that's one of the things we're really focusing on now is how can we get more of that? How can we unlock one, revenues for cities um, as cities are struggling um, with their budgets and parking is one place where you know they might be able to charge for space and two focus on new uses of space so your car sharing your delivery services ride hailing um, you know folks who are using this space but not necessarily traditionally paying for it um, this is great in Seattle because they've taken you know the time and effort to really walk street by street and understand what their curb rules are and to digitize that. Not every city is in that space, um, but we've also worked with cities that, you know, are not at this level, but still have some information, which I think most do. So in Oakland, California, each of these green dots represents a parking meter. So maybe you have <clears throat> an inventory of all of your, you know, parking meters or parking spaces with a little bit of information. So we did the same thing in, in Oakland. So here is a vehicle um, in this light blue um, that had parked and it's next to this meter. So we attach, um, you know, join those two together to say this vehicle was parked at this meter and similarly charge them. Um, and then just something food for thought as we maybe have a few minutes to discuss things, just the challenges and opportunities that we see that cities are facing maybe at the curb. Um, one, these spaces are very local. Um, as I said, businesses will fight to preserve their space. Residents will, um, you know, go kicking and screaming to keep their access to free parking. There's a lot of different users at the curb fighting for space. So it's kind of a place ripe for new regulation. Um, and then always the information might not be as clear as possible. So, um, you know, there might be confusion about where you can park and when. Um, but the opportunities on the other side of that is, you know, traditionally cities have been able to price at least some of their parking, restrict access through permits. So this is a place where maybe you don't have to go to your, you know, state or federal government to ask for permission. You might already have local authority that you've been given. Um, you know, on the flip side of chaos, there's an interest. Um, for instance, UPS and FedEx in New York City, they pay more in parking fines than they do anywhere else in the world combined in New York City. Um, so they have an interest in making more uh, order at the curb. And maybe they have to pay for that, but they probably would pay less than they do paying in fines today. 
And then finally, if you can improve how information flows, that's going to be better for everybody. Um, so the last slide, um, if you head to our website, populist.ai, we put out a report on mobility pricing, both on um, you know, shared micromobility bikes and scooters, but also talked about some themes around uh, parking pricing on streets. Um, so go ahead and check that out. If you've got any questions for me, happy to answer them now, or as you see here, um, you feel free to email me after as well. Thank you, Rodney. And maybe if the other speakers can return uh, too to the the group discussion, that would be good. We'll take uh, five more minutes because we we are running a bit late. Uh, I think Rodney, what is interesting, and it's also a question I will put to Oscar and, and Bastian, is the what you actually say is that uh, now in times that you we see parking revenue drop due to COVID. There are other uh, road users who actually don't get, contribute in uh, financially to the, the, the urban mobility system, but are making use of it. And also, and that's interesting what you said, also would benefit from a more org orderly um, and organized way of, of, uh, of managing parking for their, their behalf, specifically on um, on um, yeah on uh, logistics, for instance. So, Oscar and Bastian, are you looking into uh, into looking at, at more uh, pricing beyond cars uh, and and managing streets also or or managing your spaces also for logistics pur purposes? Um, whoever wants to go first is welcome to speak. Oh. Yeah, Bastian, yes. Yeah, we uh, we don't charge for any other use than parking besides um, the regular um, terraces. We have a, mm -hmm. a cafe or a restaurant and you have a terrace, you pay um, some kind of well, tax or uh, fee for the use of the sidewalk or the part mm -hmm. of the sidewalk you use. And I think that's that's the only fee mm -hmm. we, we ask for for the curbs yeah uh, okay maybe, maybe a permit yeah. for um um uh, someone who is uh, loading and unloading a lot on yeah, a yeah. parking space with a truck they pay a different tariff or they get a special permit not not that we rent out of the spaces no 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 yeah okay uh, at least then is more or less the same uh if you uh, if you own a commercial uh, uh, store uh, you can do your loading activities in two ways. Uh, or you pay a, a monthly a monthly uh, card that provides you to, to park your car nearby your establishment. Uh, but you can just have one card of those per establishment, per, per, per store. Or all the regular, uh, and that's the, the, most, the most used all the regular loading and unloading activities, they have specific uh, group of parking spaces uh, reserved specific for that purpose. And uh, operators doesn't pay any anything for that, uh, but they can use it only for 30 minutes. Okay, mm -hmm. so 30 minutes is free of cost for everyone uh, that are making those uh, uh, loading and unloading activities. Uh, in each in each street, there's always uh, two places, five places, four places. It depends of the the the, the number of uh, commercial uh, establishments that are in that in that street. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, next to last question, um, also related to. Um, a question from from Olivier Arcelin about the actual use of revenues. Um, uh, Bastian, you answered to that when we asked of, of where the money goes that you generate with with parking. Uh, Oscar, we we didn't explore the topic uh, where you said that you are using the um, uh, the revenues for soft mobility measures. Um, and also, Rodney, I would like to have your view on um, on this issue of, of earmarking uh, and specifically also in the view of Donald Chup that it's not only earmarking, but even uh, neighborhood earmarking and eh, that you, you spent the money where you own it. Um, does your tool uh, allow for, for I, would, would your, your 
your tools, your platform, Rodney, allow for, for such kind of, of uh, uh, support such processes? And then if you can answer that, I would return to Oscar to, to that he can explain a bit about the earmarking in, in Lisbon, but maybe first your experience in the US and how, how um, your, your tools can support this kind of, of uh, local earmarking. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> no one we're working with is doing this, but it's, I think it's very easy to do. I think it's something that should be done. Um, you know, all the cities that we work with, they're the most knowledgeable about what geographies they care about, whether that's business mm -hmm. districts or whether that's, you know, areas of their city where they want to promote new modes because it's a low income area or, you know, some other area where there's need established. Um, you know, I think it's really important to be super transparent about how that's done to be able to communicate to that neighborhood so they know when that money comes in that it's coming back to them. So figuring out how to do that in the best way. Um, I'd say, you know, earmarking that money for transportation projects is great, but something else I would bring up, you know, especially now with COVID is earmarking it to support small business mm -hmm. and especially to see that trade off where they're giving up space, but in return, maybe they're, you know, there's a pot of money to help support small business. Okay, Oscar, uh, you have a comment? Yeah, yeah um, like I said, um, this, this was uh, this was also an opportunity to change a little bit the mindset of the politicians. And um, most of the, the cost of promoting soft modes and soft mobility, especially for bike users, um, are not longer are not longer uh, being um, covered by the municipality directly but uh, it is us ml the the parking company that is making all that cost and uh, the, all that building new bike lanes supporting the cost of maintenance of in the operation of the bike uh, bike sharing scheme uh, promote and to design and to implement uh, a network a brand new network of, of uh, public uh, parking uh, reserved for bike, like I show uh, in the li little boxes when, when the, the private the, the citizens can put their private bike inside. Uh, all those measures are covered by the park directly by us by the, with the, the money that came from the, the parking revenue um, instead of being the municipality, the municipality. Okay, so we are paying directly to, to, to make things happen uh, and not giving the money to the, the city and that the city makes the construction and all those improvements mm -hmm. we are making mm -hmm. directly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's an efficient way of uh, also in, in managerial terms, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's very efficient, yeah. I said, I said it uh, on this question, uh, it, it still isn't uh, not enough well communicate. Hmm. Something of, uh, there's a lack of communication uh, to the citizens and to the, the players uh, telling persons where the parking money goes, mm -hmm. where to the money park, the, the, the parking money goes. There's a lack of communication. There's something that the cities must be uh, aware of. That. Yeah. Uh, well, here as well, Donald Chup, the, the parking guru, has the answer. He, he actually it has issued parking uh, tickets where you see where the money is spent and you, you get some kind of an, uh, uh, like you would get in a restaurant, you get your uh, your um, receipt saying like, this is as paid for parking, but also for uh, for an, uh, an, an, an uh, it has contributed to, to this cycle path for this uh, project. Okay, I have seen that everybody has covered questions in the um, in writing also. Thank you for that, for the speakers. And uh, we'll leave it at that. It's uh, 10 past three. Um, I will quickly, um, yeah, no need, need to return to my, my slides, but just to say that the, the next webinar uh, that we organize is on Thursday on the impact of automated vehicles. Um, the recording of this webinar uh, will be made available. And um, yeah, thank you. We'll continue the discussion on parking in Park for Sump in the project um, and also at the police conference, uh, which takes place um, in the uh, early days of December. So thank you, Rodney, Bastian, and Oscar. And uh, 
will uh, be in touch about this beautiful topic. Um, okay, thanks. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. Thank you, everyone. Bye.